hello there. My name, well, my channel is called Super Easy, but my, my real name is Nathan. Uh, when I was in high school, I wanted to be an independent. I have always believed that both political parties have the same goal to make a, um, to make a better America, but they had two different paths, you know. So I didn't want to be tied to one political party. You know, maybe I was like thinking, oh, maybe this year I'll vote Democrat and maybe another election I'll vote Republican. You know, that was my plan back in high school. And, uh, you know, when I was a kid, we had these mock elections where, you know, a kid would just vote for president. And when I was a kid, I was like thinking, I can't wait until I'm an adult and I do this for real. Like, I can't wait until... You know, when I grow up and my vote really counts. Uh, in 2008, I voted for Barack Obama. Now, here's the thing. I didn't really follow politics that much, you know. I just went in, voted, then continued my young adult life. I didn't really pay attention to the news that much. And I know there are like some people like, if you don't follow the politics, then why bother voting? If you're given an opportunity to vote for the president of the United States, why turn it down? Like, why turn down the opportunity? You know, why turn down the opportunity? Uh, so even though I didn't follow politics, uh, for the next four years, my parents would bug me. Like they voted for a Republican. You know, so when there was like some controversy in uh, Obama's presidency. Uh, they would be like, they'll look at me like, that's your president, and I'll be like, he's your president too, and they're like, we didn't vote for him. You know, he did bomb, you know, Obama did bomb in the Middle East. Uh, there was some controversy in his healthcare, like, I read comments from people saying that, they, you know, after Obama changed some things in healthcare, they couldn't afford healthcare. You know? So, like, in 2012, uh, I voted for Mitt Romney just to get my parents off my back. Like, there, I voted for Mitt Romney now. Get off my back. Uh, and just like in 2008, like, in 2012, I still wasn't following politics. Uh, I didn't follow politics until 2015 when Donald Trump ran. And you have to thank Donald Trump, because if it wasn't for him, people wouldn't be following politics like they did before. Like, uh, Stephen Crowder did this video back in 2009 when he was asking people who the vice president was, like Joe Biden, uh, who the speaker of the house was, Nancy Pelosi. Like, they, they didn't even know. They didn't know. Like, nowadays, people do know who the vice president is. Nowadays, people do know who the speaker of the house is. But 10 years ago, people probably didn't even know who Ruth Bader Ginsburg was. So you have to thank Donald Trump for getting people to follow politics again. Now here's the thing. Back in 2008, it never crossed my mind that anyone who voted for John McCain was racist. Like, if you didn't vote for Obama, you're racist. Like, it's the 21st century. Last time I checked, uh, we ended slavery, we passed civil rights, uh, Martin Luther King, you know, Martin Luther King Jr. and Rosa Parks that are celebrated as historical figures, and you had a black man running for president, the idea that anyone who didn't vote for Barack Obama was racist is ridiculous. Like, and the people who didn't vote for Obama because they were racist, what did that make up? Like, less than 2% of the country? So, that never crossed my mind when Obama ran for president. Like, Anyone who didn't vote for Obama was racist. Like, that was ridiculous. And in 2015, I started seeing these co these comments uh, from people saying, like, oh, Obama, it was like, oh, Donald Trump, he's he's a racist. He's going to bring white supremacy to the country. I remember like, reading those comments, like, you're crazy, and anyone who agrees with you is crazy. And from the looks of it, it was like the entire Hillary Clinton Democratic fan base, voter base. And I was like, 
<laughs> screw you guys, I'm voting for Trump. I don't want to be associated with nut jobs screaming white supremacy and Nazis. Like, they sounded no different from the tinfoil hat crazy guy on a street corner holding up the cardboard sign that says, the end is near, although compared to the political left, that guy is actually sane. <laughs> you know, and after Donald Trump won 2016, you know, on the night he won the election in 2016, I was nervous, not because Donald Trump won, but because of how the political left was acting. They're like, Donald Trump's going to destroy the country. Now excuse us while we ride in the streets and destroy the country. Like, they were going around attacking and harassing anyone who voted for Donald Trump and then cry that hate won. Like, how ironic is that? Like, there's a reason why I didn't have, like, a Make America Great Again bumper sticker on my car or a Trump bumper sticker because I didn't want to go back to my car, you know, destroyed. Like, with a busted window that's going to cost me an arm and a leg. Like, I didn't want to drive down the street with a cardboard window. You know, I didn't want that risk. And how the political left after these past four years was just ridiculous. You know, after the 2016 election, I started following right-leaning, you know, channels and pages on Facebook like Steven Crowder, Ben Shapiro, and Paul Joseph Watson before he was removed from, from Facebook because of his association to um, Alex Jones. But, like, these people on the right, they're like, they're pointing to people on the left, like, those people are crazy, aren't they? And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> I don't want to be associated with people screaming out Nazis and white supremacy and fascism. And that's how they acted the past, you know, these the past four years. It's like it's ridiculous. And the media is so biased. You know, they're taking something and they're just twisting a narrative. And you have to go to alternative sources to find the truth. I mean, you look at the Covington Catholic kids or story or you know, or how they, you know, how the media handled the coronavirus. It's like, they politicized an illness. And, you know, if the past four years didn't convince me not to vote Democrat anymore, just 2020 alone did it for me. You know, they wasted two and a half years on this conspiracy that Russia meddled with our election. Uh, they wasted our, our time with impeachment. You know, they twisted the narrative on the coronavirus. And the past few weeks, there's this controversy with Hunter Biden. And the media is covering it up. It's just so un unbelievable. You know, and you have these Democrats defunding the police while calling rioters peaceful protesters. And when these rioters inv invade people's homes, they they criticize the people defending their homes, calling them terrorists, like the Mikowskis. I live in a rural area. Like You can look behind me, there's trees and forests. I'm not worried about rioters coming to my home, but, you know, my younger sister, she lives in, in a small town. She doesn't have to worry about that. But my older sister, she lives in the city. She lives down in Georgia. You know, she lives, you know, I'm concerned about her and her family. Like, are the rides going to come down their street and just come onto their property, threaten their lives? And it's messed up that, you know, these states run by Democratic politicians are like, they're going after the people defending their homes. You know, a few weeks ago, there was a story of a man who commit, you know, who took his life because the media and the law sided with the rioters and not him, who's just defending himself. And you think that's just going to end when Joe Biden's going to be in office? The guy's a wuss. He's going to do nothing about it. And these riots are happening in cities 
run by Democratic mayors, in states run by Democratic governors, and when Trump wants to end these riots, they're like, no, we don't want you to end these riots. We're going to let our cities burn to the ground, and we're going to blame it on you. But we're not going to blame it on the Democratic politicians who's running them. I mean, the Democratic mayor of Portland, Ted Wheeler, he's, he's doing nothing. <laughs> it's, so yeah, just this, this year alone has convinced me not to vote Democrat. Like, if the past four years it was not enough, this year alone did, definitely did. You know, in 20... 15, 2016, I was an independent, but now I don't think I ever want to vote Democrat anymore. I'm a, I'm full Republican from here on out. Unless there comes a time where Republicans are doing the exact same thing the Democrats are doing the past four years and may I'll change my mind, but I don't think that would, I was like, I, I don't know if that day would ever happen. You know? This is not technically a walk away video. Like I was never fully committed to the Democratic Party, but I want to give a shout out to the walk wave movement. I want to give out a shout out to uh, Brian Nachaka for starting the walk away movement and lean. You know, he's like the Moses, leading these people away from the Democratic Party who felt betrayed these past four years. You know, even if those people don't want to vote, are not, like, even those people are not joining the Republican Party, like, they just didn't want to be associated with Democrats anymore. So, a shout out to Brandon. Uh, if this does end up on the Walkway channel, uh, on my YouTube channel, I, you know, play video games, I do Let's Plays. Uh... So, if you're interested, you can check out my channel. Uh, and if there's anyone watching, like the video. And if you come across my channel, like, you know, so you can subscribe. And have a nice day. I know this is considered a white supremacy symbol, but this is an okay symbol to me. Have a nice day. Bye.